Hello everyone and welcome to Control Engineering and Control Theory Tutorials. In these tutorials we present real and applicable knowledge of Control Engineering and Control Theory. This tutorial is dedicated to a very important method that every control engineer should know. However, the reality is that only a few people are actually familiar with this method. The name of the method is feedback linearization. Here is a brief motivation for creating this video tutorial and for explaining the feedback linearization. The widely used approach for deriving the controllers of nonlinear systems is to take our nonlinear dynamics that's represented by this equation, where x is the state and u is the control input and to linearize such a nonlinear equation in order to derive the standard state space model that looks like this. This state space model is a linear state space model where A and B are system matrices. After we derive the linearized state space model, we can use standard control engineering methods in order to design feedback controllers. And feedback controllers can have this form, can be state feedback control laws, where u is equal to minus fx, and this control law will stabilize the system or it will achieve a set point tracking. However, there is one issue with this approach, and let us illustrate this issue graphically. Let us assume that our nonlinear function can be represented as a static nonlinearity. For example, this nonlinearity can look like this, where this is x and this is nonlinearity f of x. When we linearize our nonlinear dynamics, we usually introduce a linearization point. This linearization point can be, for example, an, an equilibrium point of the system or it can be a steady state. When we linearize the system, we actually approximate the dynamics by a linear function that's shown over here. The linear state space model and the corresponding controller work relatively well when the operating point is close to this linearization point over here. However, if our operating point significantly, significantly deviates from the linearization point, then as you can see on this graph, our linear approximation of a nonlinear function is not accurate. And this linearization error shown here can either decrease the performance of the system or even worse, it can produce instabilities. The main question is, is there an alternative approach for designing control algorithms that does not depend on the linearization? And the answer, of course, is yes. We can use nonlinear control methods to design controllers. However, the issue with nonlinear control design methods is that they are too complex sometimes and their implementation might be difficult. However, there is still one approach that you can try to apply and that's not so complex and that can be used to exactly linearize our dynamics. And this approach is called feedback linearization. Before I start, I would like to mention the following. Those of you who are my subscribers or who follow this channel know by now that I always create a post that nicely summarizes everything that I will explain in this video. And consequently, here's the post. This post contains equations, contains all the explanations, and it even contains simulink blocks and graphs. A link to this post is given in the description below. Secondly, it took me a significant amount of time, energy, and planning to create this video, 
and this post. And consequently, I kindly ask you to press the like and subscribe buttons. Thank you. My teaching philosophy is to explain the main ideas of an approach by using examples. Only in the later stage, the theory should be explained. That is, students should first obtain a strong hands-on knowledge of a concept, and in the later stage, they should enlarge and deepen their knowledge by studying the theory. Accordingly, by following this approach, I explain the feedback linearization by using an example. So the main purpose of this video is to provide you a quick introduction to feedback linearization by using an example. Later on, you can open the book and you can study feedback linearization in more details. Here is the example. It's a relatively simple system consisting of a ball, a massless rod that's being attached to the ceiling at this point Q. In my previous tutorial, which can be found here, I derived an equation of motion and a state space model of the pendulum. And here's the explanation, here's the equation of motion, and here's the state space model. I will use this knowledge and these equations in this video. So here's the equation of motion. Theta is this angle over here, g is the gravitational acceleration constant, l is the length of the rod, and f is the control force. I assume that the control force is equal to k times u, where k is a constant and u is our control input. After substituting this equation in this equation, I obtain the equation that you can see over here. Then we can rewrite this equation like this. We basically take this nonlinear term and we put it on the right hand side. Next, let us write a state space model. We first introduce the state space variable x1 is theta, x2 is theta dot. And here is the state space model. Obviously, this is a nonlinear state space model, and the reason is that we have this sinusoidal term on the right-hand side. As I mentioned at the beginning of this video, this nonlinear term over here significantly complicates control system design. If we would be able to somehow cancel this term, then we would be able to significantly simplify the control system design. And the feedback linearization is actually trying to achieve that. In a nutshell, the main idea of feedback linearization is to cancel this nonlinear term and then to find an appropriate form of control input that assigns the poles of the feedback linearized closed-loop systems at desired locations, such that the system is stabilized around the desired point. In our case, we are interested in asymptotic stabilization of the control system around the stable equilibrium point, that is, x1 is equal to theta is equal to zero. And graphically, this linearization point is basically this position over here of the pendulum. This position corresponds to theta is equal to zero. Of course, the feedback linearization approach can easily be generalized for the case of set point tracking. For example, we can assume that we want to stabilize our system around this point, let's say theta, where theta is equal to 30 degrees. And this will be explained in future tutorials. For the time being, in order not to blur the main ideas of feedback linearization with too many details, we focus on the simplest possible case that's illustrated over here. That is, we focus on stabilization around the equilibrium point x1 is equal to theta is equal to zero. Let us apply the first step of the feedback linearization matter. We want to cancel this term. We can cancel this term by wisely choosing this input u over here. And because we want to cancel the right side 
of the second state equation, we can simply define this equation. So we can say that minus g over L sinus x1 plus k times u should be equal to minus c0 x1 minus c1 x2. Remember that x1 is theta and c2 and uh, theta dot is equal to x2. From this equation, we obtain our feedback control load that's given over here. Note that this is a state feedback control law that will exactly linearize the closed loop system. That is, we are not using Jacobian methods to linearize the control system. This is very important thing to keep in mind. Another important thing to keep in mind is that although the closed loop system will become linear, and you will see that in the sequel, the feedback control law over here is still non-linear. This is because of this term over here. Next, let us substitute this control law in the second equation of the state space model. And here you can see the result of this substitution. This part over here is our feedback control law that's given over here. Now, we can see that k and k can be cancelled, and as the result, we obtain the second expression over here. Then, we can cancel these two terms, and as the result, we obtain this equation over here. And notice over here that this equation is a linear state space model. To summarize, by applying a nonlinear control law to our original nonlinear dynamics, we obtained a closed loop system that's completely linear. And that's the magic of the feedback linearization approach. We are able to exactly linearize our closed loop system. The next task is to choose these parameters C0 and C1 such that the closed loop system is asymptotically stable. By properly choosing C0 and C1, we can make sure that our state, after some times, goes to the equilibrium point. Here I made a mistake by saying goes to the equilibrium point, since this is a dynamical system and the state trajectory can never reach in the finite time the equilibrium point. I need to say the following. The state will reach a very small neighborhood of the equilibrium point, and that's the correct expression. Okay, so let's see how to find the parameters C0 and C1. Notice that the last equation can be written in this standard form, where A matrix is given over here. The characteristic polynomial of this system is given over here. That is, it's a determinant of this matrix given over here, where I is the identity matrix, 1, 1, 0, 0 of diagonals. So let us compute this characteristic polynomial. I can simply write SI minus A, and the result is given over here. Then I need to compute the determinant of this expression, and the determinant is given over here. Basically, the determinant is equal to S times SC plus 1, this term over here, minus, minus C0, and that gives plus, and the final expression is given over here. Next, let us use a simple pole placement method to design the parameters C1 and C0. Let us place the closed loop poles at the following locations. S1 is equal to minus 2 and S2 is equal to minus 4. As the result of this pole placement method, the response of the closed loop system in time should look like this. So both x1 and x2 
should decay over time. That is, we will not see oscillations in our response. The desired closed-loop characteristic polynomial corresponding to this selection of the closed-loop poles is given over here. After we multiply this expression, we will obtain s squared plus 6s plus 8. This desired polynomial should be equal to the parameterized characteristic polynomial. That is, equation 15 and equation 17 should be equal. And as the result, we obtain this equation. From this equation, we can clearly see that C1 is equal to 6 and C0 is equal to 8. And this is the final result. That is, these are the parameters that will make the closed-loop system to be asymptotically stable. In my next video, I will explain you in details how to simulate the system in Simulink. However, here, in order to make this video as short as possible, I will only present the results. Let us first simulate the system without any control action. That is, we simulate our equation theta 2 dots is equal to minus g over L sinus theta. The parameters used in simulations are given over here. And here are the initial conditions. The Simulink block diagram is shown over here. Notice that we have two integrators and here's the nonlinear part of the equation. This figure shows the response of the system. Obviously, we will have an oscillatory behavior of theta. This is because the following. If we basically set our initial condition like this, our pendulum will oscillate like this where the amplitude of oscillations will be equal to theta zero. And this is exactly the amplitude of oscillation, theta zero. Next, let us add the control input and simulate the scaled step response. The equation we simulate is given over here, where the parameters are given here, and notice here u is equal to six. Here is the block diagram of such a system in Simulink, and when we simulate the system, we obtain this response. Over here, you can observe that this control input biases our response. That is, that is it shifts the response vertically. Next, we simulate the feedback linearization control law. We substitute C1 and C0, and Instead of x1, we can write theta, and instead of, instead of x2, we can write theta dot. And here is the block diagram in Simulink that simulates the feedback linearization law. Here's our feedback law. Notice how I created this law. I took theta, I applied this theta to sinus block, this is sinus theta, then I multiply this term by g over l, and I obtain the term over here. Notice here that I have the second term. I simply take theta from here, multiply by constant C0, and I obtain this term over here by simply take, taking theta dot and multiplying by minus C1. Then I add these three terms, and I multiply by 1 over k, and over here I apply this control input to our system. And the response is given over here we can see that we obtain the expected type of the response, that is, we don't see any oscillations, and this is the direct consequence of the fact that we selected the poles to be at the locations 8 and 6. Okay, that would be all for today. I hope that you like this video. If you like the videos I create, please press the like and subscribe buttons. Thank you very much, and have a nice day.